Okay, everybody. <clears throat> Continuing off of what we were doing the last time, we're just going to fly through a bunch more questions, looking at them, um, get as far as we can in the time that we have. So, <clears throat> question 21. Let me double check, make sure that I'm recording. Yep, we're good. So, <clears throat> NADH and NADPH participate in which of the following types of reactions? Immediately, if we think, I remember our NAD. Our NADH slash our NAD plus these guys, they're going to be the ones that dropping off that hydrogen, taking up that hydrogen, is exchanging of electrons, loss of electrons, gain of electrons. That's our oil rig or oxidation reduction type reactions. Remember, we start throwing this stuff in. NAD and NADH, think you can reword this question. What vitamin are those made up of? That is niacin. What vitamin is niacin? Think back, on our, back to our mnemonic. Tall, rich, nudist. The three, vitamin B3 is niacin. So you could rewrite this question. Which vitamin, which of the following vitamins participates in oxidation reduction reactions? Bam, our vitamin B3. And then also technically our vitamin B2 as well does oxidation reduction reactions. Because that is our riboflavin, which is our... Um, F, uh, FADH as well. NAD plus can be can directly be used for blank. So which of the following? So we have NADP plus. Very similar question to the one right above it. We look at this and we say we know NADP H's and stuff. They're either used for oxidation or reduction reactions. So we get rid of the other two choices. NAD. NADP plus, we're looking at, okay, what are we trying to do? We're trying to take away electrons from something else, give it to there. So oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. So we are taking electrons from something else. That is an oxidation type reaction. Niacin deficiency can also be caused by deficiency of which of the following compound? We saw this question, a very similar question to it yesterday. The answer to this is tryptophan, because in the liver, so in the liver, tryptophan can be converted to niacin. So if we're out of tryptophan and we're out of niacin, then we are in big trouble. Um, pantothenic acid or vitamin b5 is an integral component of blank of which of the following so pantothenic acid vitamin b5 uh, we look through all of our choices and this one uh this is again just kind of a memorize start connecting as you're making a chart i would throw these different things these specific questions into the mix just because this is a memorization game really where our acyl carrier protein is connected to vitamin b5 so literally i would write in do this a question so acyl carrier protein or acp um, uses what b vitamin and know that that's the pantothenic acid, a.k.a. vitamin B5. Pellegra is caused by which? So pellegra, remember, pellegra is the four Ds. Dementia, diarrhea. One day I'll learn how to spell diarrhea. One day. Today's not that day, but one day. Dermatitis, and then death. And this is because it is a deficiency of our niacin right there remember folate we're looking at um gene issues the spina bifida that kind of stuff vitamin c deficiency of vitamin c we're looking at scurvy because pirates they love the c excess of vitamin c um uh, the book gave a couple examples of excess of vitamin C. Um, the one that I know of most is it does cut in excess. It causes diarrhea. But what other did it give here? In excess, large doses. Oh, kidney stones as well. 
So metabolic acidosis and kidney stones will give us uh, if we have too much vitamin C. Next thing stuff. Riboflavin, often we uh, deficiency of riboflavin. Let me pop up that chart that I have. Uh, riboflavin typically is not anything super serious because remember it's the FADH, which while it is important, um, it's not you know our main source of stuff like um, niacin is. So. Um, Typically, it is, I don't think this is mentioned in the book, but typically you would get what's called chelosis. So it's like a cracking, burning kind of thing at the edge of the mouth and the corners of the mouth. So if you get a question like that, um, we'll see if that if that does come up in, in the questions. Okay, presence of which of the following prevents biotin absorption through the intestinal epithelial cells? So biotin, the thing that we need to remember about biotin, first of all, think which B vitamin is biotin. Biotin is going to be, let's go through a whole rich, tall, rich, nudist, played, pickle, ball, or centuries. We have one, two, three, five, six, seven. 9 and 12. Biotin is our vitamin B7. And B7 biotin found in egg yolks. Big key there, it's then the egg yolks. Interestingly enough, within eggs themselves, within the egg whites, there's a protein called avidin. And avidin actually prevents the absorption of biotin. Oh yeah, there we go. Uh, thiamine deficiency can cause which of the following? Thiamine is B1 vitamin. Bam, we're going to go. It's air. Our berry berry is thiamine deficiency. Let me look real quick at what this condition is, because off the top of my head, it does. Oh, OK. Yeah, this is just the the technical name for riboflavin. Ribo. Flavin deficiency. So a vitamin B2 deficiency. Jaundice. We see jaundice with liver issues. Um, you can also see it with hyper beta carotinemia. Basically, like if you somebody were to eat a ton of carrots every single day, they would have hyper beta carotinemia. Um, <clears throat> the big difference, and this is always a test question, a lot of like national boards and stuff, is that the way that you differentiate between jaundice from liver issues and hyperbeta keratinemia is look at the sclera of the eye, the white part of the eye. If yellow, that is a liver issue. Um, Pellegra, that's our four Ds. That is niacin, vitamin B3. Vitamin B6 can participate in which of the following categories of reactions? Again, this is just going to be part of our chart. Let's see if this opened yet. There we go. Do, 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 chart. Vitamin B6, bam. Transamination type reactions, as well as our amino acid metabolism. So these are our transamination type reactions. And this just just raw memorization. You just have to practice that until you, until you remember it. What is the active coenzyme form 
of thiamine or vitamin B1. This one, we look at it, um, look through thiamine, thiamine monophosphate, thiamine bismethyl-CoA, and thiamine pyrophosphate. If we remember, there was a couple times where we mentioned that coenzyme, that TPP, that is the active coenzyme form of thiamine, the thiamine pyrophosphate. What is the metabolic benefit of methionine synthase? Catalyzed conversion of homocysteine to methionine. So homocysteine and methionine, that was that whole process. Remember we talk about, actually pull it up on this guy. Right here. There it is. Where our methionine and homocysteine, where our homocysteine is converted to methionine, Methionine goes, it methylates something, so we get methylation of something. So then we can continue this loop. It's thanks to our B9 and our cobalamin that this whole process happens. Um, the metabolic benefit of methionine synthase catalyzed conversion of homocysteine to methionine. We look at all of our possible answer choices. Do, 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 do. And we know that it has to do with either vitamin. We're looking for B9 or B12. B12 is typically the better answer choice compared to B9. And right here, it regenerates methylcobalamin and maintains a store of tetrahydrofolate. And if you remember, methylcobalamin, cobalamin is our B12. Cobalamin. And then our B9 is folic acid aka folate, the active form being tetrahydrofolate. What is the metabolic significance of the conversion of homocysteine to methionine? Regenerates and maintains a store of tetrahydrofolate. Uh, sorry, question 31. Uh, This is just using, again, more chemical names So we have right here. Answer A, regenerates and maintains a store of tetrahydrofolate. That's technically true. It maintains a store of hydroxycobalamin and mitochondria. That's technically part of it is true. It maintains a store of cobalamin. But the last answer, it maintains a store of deoxyadenosylcobalamin and tetrahydrofolate. That contains both of them. But that is the most true when compared. Question 32, which could be the one of the major causes of thiamine deficiency? Let me go through this. Do, 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 do. <clears throat> We're looking at dietary iron. That'll be anemia type stuff. Diet deficiency of folic acid. That's not going to cause thiamine deficiency. Thiamine pyrophosphate kinase catalyzed reaction. Nope, that's using the thiamine. Formation of thiamine pyrophosphate. Nope. So right here, a defect in the thiamine transporter protein gene transcription. So getting the thiamine into the body. Which could be one of the major causes of thiamine deficiency. Decrease in thiamine pyrophosphate kinase catalyzed reaction. Increased formation of thiamine pyrophosphate. Inactivity, inactivation of anilate cyclinase or dietary availability of thiamine monophosphate. This question, the answer that they have is a decrease in thiamine pyrophosphate kinase catalyzed reaction. I'll be honest, this question, I don't quite understand why that causes thiamine deficiency. We can see if it's easily understood by looking at the book. Thiamine, that active thiamine is thiamine, that kind of stuff. ATP-dependent thiamine 
pyrophosphokinase is present. It's absorbed by the intestinal mucosa. The monophosphate coming mainly from diet is converted to thiamine catalyzed by phosphatase enzyme. Yeah, looking at this, I personally would say I think this might be a case of wrong answer choice. I believe D should be the correct answer. The dietary availability of thiamine monophosphate. Because the thiamine monophosphate coming mainly from the diet is converted to that thiamine catalyzed by a phosphatase enzyme. So I, I believe that this one is mismarked, in my opinion. Which is the active cofactor form of the vitamin B12 within mitochondria. This is what kind of bothers me a little bit. Um, we've always talked about cofactors are metals, coenzymes are vitamins. For some reason, in this chapter, and in some parts, it just calls coenzymes cofactors. By like technical definition, that's wrong. But just go with it. So if you're talking about vitamins and it talks about a cofactor, it really just is. It means coenzyme. Even though that's not what it's saying. It's, it is what it is. So the active coenzyme form of B12 within mitochondria. We saw, we think, okay, B12, which one is that? That is the cobalamin. All of these choices contain cobalamin. So we dig a little bit deeper. Within the mitochondria specifically is going to be our deoxyadenosyl cobalamin within the mitochondria. Let's find cobalamin here. For some reason, they put decided to put the B vitamins out of order. But it's fine. So cyanocobalamin, this right here, this is going to be our base. So this is the basic form, not active. We keep going. The active forms of vitamin B12, methylcobalamin and deoxyadenosylcobalamin. This is active form in mitochondria, methylcobalamin, active form. And let's find out exactly where. The deoxycobalamin, aka deoxydenosyl cobalamin, um, is the conversion of methyl malonyl CoA to succinyl CoA. And that reaction occurs in the mitochondria. So that was in the mitochondria. Methylcobalamin is part of the conversion of homocysteine to methionine. So that's going to be happening, happening more cytosolically in other places like that. I think. Um, homocysteine. Hydroxycobalamin, I think I saw there somewhere, but I don't remember quite what it does. Hydroxycobalamin, maybe it isn't a thing, actually. Uh, do, 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 hydroxy, hydroxy, hydroxy. I don't see it in any of our important stuff. <clears throat> do, 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 do. Whole bunch of stuff here. There it is. Hydroxycobalamin enters into the mitochondria and is then converted to its other active form as deoxyadenosyl cobalamin. Okay. So this gets turned, this gets turned into that. Okay, which is the most active form of vitamin B6? 
for enzyme catalyzed reactions. The one that we always see for the enzyme catalyzed reactions um, is the is a PDPP is, is what it was abbreviated to. Um, the pyridoxal phosphate, this guy right there, that is our most active form of the vitamin B6. What is the storage form of vitamin B12 within the cytosol before it is converted to its active cofactor form? So the storage form within the cytosol, so we deoxyadenosylcobalamin, we saw that that is the active form in mitochondria, methylcobalamin, active form in the cytosol, so our storage form is our hydroxycobalamin. Which of the following activated forms of the vitamins is required by the enzyme dihydrofolate reductase, dihydrofolate reductase, to convert folic acid to its active coenzyme form? So we look at the enzyme, it is a reductase. We look over here, which of these is used with a reductase? Bam, our NADPH does our oxidation reduction type reactions. FAD plus, this guy would be doing an oxidase type enzyme. This is our reductase enzyme. Which of the following active forms of vitamins converts folate to dihydrofolate and then to tetrahydrofolate? This is literally the exact same question as before. Um, active form of vitamins. So even looking at this, NAD+, FAD+, these guys, um, converting folate to dihydrofolate and then to tetrahydrofolate. So activating folate, again, is going to be NADPH. Which of the following compounds is the active coenzyme form of riboflavin? So riboflavin is our flavonoids. It's going to be um, one sec. There my screen goes. Okay, back. Um, uh, is the active coenzyme form of riboflavin? So the active forms. These are the flavonoids in total, um, but a flavonoid itself is not the actual active compound. This is niacin. Acetyl-CoA isn't with that. So this is one of the forms, FMNH2. Also, you know, any of those FAD pluses, FADH2, those guys as well, that would be acceptable answer choices for this. Which of the following compounds is the active enzyme form of riboflavin? Again, same question, just what we just answered. FAD+. Plus. Which of the following compounds transfers methyl group to synthesize methionine from homocysteine in the methionine-cysteine catalyzed reaction? We just talked about this, so... Uh, transfers the methyl group to synthesize methionine from homocysteine, that is our methylcobalamin. Cool. Now, vitamin B9, which is our tetrahydrofolate, also takes part in this interaction. However, its job is is not the actual synthesizing of methionine from homocysteine. It does the step before. So if we look back at this, um, B9, the folate, its job is to give the methyl group to the B12, and then the B12 takes care of the actual, it takes part in the actual synthesis. Which of the following forms of cobalamin 
is used to store it within the cytosol. Again, another repeat question. That was the hydroxycobalamin. Which of the following forms of folic acid is absorbed by the intestinal mucosal layers? This is going to be another kind of just, hey, memorize this type of question. Um, when it's absorbed, by folic acid is absorbed, it's not in its active form, so it's not part of the tetrahydrofolate. That leaves us between these two, and this one, it is the uh, teroyl monoglutamate is the form that's absorbed by the intestinal mucosal layers. Just, I would just know... So remember, in the intestines, everything is broken down into its um, into its monomers. So those are individual subunits. So that's why it's a monoglutamate. Which of the following statements is true? Inadequate, inadequate dietary thymine does not produce beriberi. That is false. It does produce beriberi. The oxidized form of vitamin K is the active form of this vitamin. We haven't talked about vitamin K at all in this whole part of the chapter. But let's keep on going. Cytosolic NADPH does not participate in oxidation type of reactions. That is clearly false. It 100% does. Folate deficiency can disrupt DNA synthesis. Absolutely. Um, oh, yeah. Fol folate deficiency can disrupt DNA synthesis. That is absolutely true. And vitamin C does not exert a role as a free radical scavenger. It 100% does um, not. Does. So if you took out that not, then we'd be good. But yeah. Okay, which of the following vitamins is used as a coenzyme of dihydrofolate reductase? I think this is the third time that this exact question has been asked. So star this question because it's probably going to be on the test. To you, do any of the folate stuff, we're using an NDPH. Which of the following vitamins has the ability to decrease lipid peroxidation? So lipid peroxidation is are those free radical type stuff, breaking off stuff, and that is our ascorbic acid, a.k.a. vitamin C. Which of the following vitamins is used to produce L-dopamine, a decarboxylated product of L-dopa? We come back to our chart of all of our guys, and we remember, hey, that's that previous chapter chapter eight the amino acid metabolism making of all that other stuff uh it might have been chapter chapter nine it was chapter nine um that we made a bunch of that stuff so our pyridoxine is responsible and perfectly acceptable other answer would be b6 which of the following vitamins participates in oxidative decarboxylation reactions decarboxylation ooh, oxidative decarboxylation type reactions that is our I mean same thing this is just memorizing this chart I mean does decarboxylation uh, which pair of vitamins participates in oxidation re oxidation reduction do, 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 do. Looking here, niacin and riboflavin are oxidation reduction. Which protein present within the intestinal epithelial cells delivers vitamin B12 into the blood circulation? Um, this is going to be, finally, if you see the answer for this, this trans cobalamin 2, that is our transporter, our B12 transporter we've seen that as an answer choice a couple times before which reaction is favored by biotin the biotin um, is going to be our b6 right so one two three four, 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 four. 
three, D seven actually. One, two, three, five, six, seven, nine, and twelve. So B seven. Um, biotin B seven is going to be carboxylation. Again, this is just straight flashcard type material. Practice this B seven carboxylation type reactions. As opposed, reading that carefully, carboxylation versus decarboxylation. Decarboxylation is thiamine, carboxylation is biotin. Which type of reactions are catalyzed by riboflavins? Those oxidation reduction reactions. Which vitamin can increase absorption of iron from the small intestines? You pair it with vitamin C. Vitamin C helps the absorption of iron. That's just one of those little tidbits that never goes away, and you should probably remember for future tests. The vitamin is a free radical scavenger. Vitamin C, also remember, what's it called besides vitamin C? Ascorbic acid. Which vitamin is an integral component of acetyl coenzyme A? What is part of the coenzyme A? This is going to be our pantothenic acid, aka vitamin B5. This is just another one of those little tidbits that it's like, hey, this this is that's its big thing. The pantothenic acid is the structural component of coenzyme A. That is going to be important in future tests and stuff. A lot of just straight flashcards from this stuff. Which vitamin is the most important to for, perform carboxylation? Reaction during fatty bi acid biosynthesis. Remember, we are carboxylation. What does carboxylation? Folate does DNA kind of stuff. Ascorbic acid deals with the free radicals. Niacin, one, two, three. Niacin oxidation reduction reactions. So it should be biotin doing carboxylation. Why would I ever know folate? Yeah, the folate's the one carbon transfers, and then emit DNA and RNA synthesis. Which vitamin is required for the biosynthesis of glycine from serine? This is a repeat question that we've already had before. The answer is tetrahydrofolate. Another one that this is just kind of a... This is like the bonus style type of question where it's just kind of random information that you just... They want you to remember. Which vitamin uses a coenzyme for the enzyme catalyzed conversion of a ketose sugar into an aldose glycera aldose sugar? So going from a ketose to an aldose type sugar. How do we get there? We're going to use our lovely thiamine. I guess something written down for that. Yeah, right there. Transketolase reactions for in conversions of sugar phosphates. Which vitamin U is used for oxidative decarboxylation of pyruvate to form acetyl CoA? This is digging way back into the brain when we talked about um, that pyruvate dehydrogenase. Uh, what's the full enzyme? Uh, enzyme that converts pyruvate to acetyl CoA. The pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. Remember that it has those two different components. Um, it has. Actually, a couple different chunks of, of stuff that it does. But it's a decarboxylation. It does oxidation and transfer hydroxyl acetyl and hydroxyl ethyl to acetyl and then NAD plus reduction because it does multiple different parts. So the oxidative decarboxylation, this whole component is going to be thiamine that does that part. Transketolase. 
reaction. This is just saying the same thing um, as we said above before. Right here, going sugars, transketolase. It's changing the sugars. It's oh, it's thiamine. I light. Make it look pretty nice. Water soluble vitamin can produce toxicity if taken in excessive quantities. That is more than one gram per day for several weeks. So we look at these thiamine, riboflavin, pantothenic acid. It's very, very hard to overdose on um, B vitamins because they're water soluble and you pee them right out. The one that you potentially can is ascorbic acid, aka vitamin C. But again, one gram per day for several weeks, that's a lot of vitamin C, like a lot of vitamin C. Why do we require intrinsic factor? Intrinsic factor is the one that we looked at. It's paired with the vitamin B12 in the small intestine, where it's in the stomach. And if we don't have intrinsic factor, we can't absorb vitamin B12 and we get um, pernicious anemia. Now, the consumption of raw eggs tends to be a problem because it contains the protein of vitamin, which prevents biotin absorption. And that's all of our B vitamins. Now, a bunch more questions. Fat-soluble vitamins. Um, Yeah, it's going to be very similar to a lot of the um, B, B vitamin type stuff. Just this is the opposite side. Rather than being water soluble, these are our opposites. These are our fat soluble vitamins. A derivative which of the following is a coenzyme for the enzyme gamma glutamyl carboxylase? These kind of questions. Um, a lot of these, it's just going to be, hey, repeat them over and over and over again, and word association. So this is our vitamin K, the gamma glutamyl carboxylase. So start associating words if you want to start making flashcards. I would recommend doing that. Now, if you go through these questions five, six, seven times um, all day tomorrow, you'll be pretty set for the test on Thursday. Biosynthesis of which of the following vitamins is initiated by photochemical reaction in the human skin. This one you definitely need to know that is our vitamin D. More specifically, it's on the palms of the hands, soles of the foot. You also want to remember that it is linked to the kidneys. Kidney. As a reminder, if you haven't already, to, if it's already nighttime, then tomorrow, go outside, go into the sunlight. It's good for you. If not, get a vitamin D supplement. Um, decrease synthesis of which of the following compounds can interfere with the absorption of the vitamin A precursors. Vitamin A precursors, we have lipoproteins, cholesterol, bile. This one's going to be all of the above because our lipoproteins, like our chylomicrons, are the word responsible for helping to bring in all those fats. Bile is helping to break all that stuff down. And if it's at least two of them, it's got to be all three. Deficiency of which compound? would interrupt with the biosynthesis of rhodopsin. So rhodopsin specifically is a chemical that is in the eye. Um, let's go and find this. You spend a lot of time in this chapter, in chapter 12, um, with the eye stuff with vitamin A. Um, Find the 
here it talks about rhodopsin. There you go. It's a component of the visual pigment rhodopsin, which is present in the rod cells. And right there, 11 cis retinol is an isomer produced from all transretinol by the enzyme retinol isomerase. 11 cis and all transretinols can activate rhodopsin. The 11 cis retinol is specifically bound to the visual protein opsin and forms rhodopsin. So that 11 cis retinol, if we're deficient in that, binds to opsin to form rhodopsin. Okay, deficiency of which of the following forms of vitamin A would disrupt growth and development of the rod and cone cells. Uh, this one again, like I said, this is going to be a lot of just kind of, you can try and like memorize the entire individual, each little process. Um, it will help to kind of write each of these out um, and associate them with the, their specific type of job. Let's see if I can find the retinoic acid. Rods and cones. Retinoic acid. Let's see if I don't even remember. I don't don't quite remember seeing that specific part in the book. Let's see. Do some absorption. Here it is. Just this little tiny component. Ooh. That the retinoic acid supports growth and differentiation. Right there. That little line is that part. So if we see growth and development, growth and differentiation, thinking retinoic acid. Deficiency of which of the following vitamins can impair the release of stored iron? That is our vitamin C. Whenever we talk about iron, we're talking about it pairing with vitamin C. Proficiency of which vitamin can cause rickets. What is rickets? Rickets is basically bad bone development in children. Its counterpart is osteomalacia, which is the condition in adults. Basically, the bones are not forming properly, and you got issues, so decreased bone density, that kind of stuff. This is caused by two things, either not enough calcium or not enough vitamin D. So again, get outside. Deficiency of which vitamin can interfere with the blood clotting. Vitamin K is our blood clotting protein uh, vitamin. You'll get way more into this next next trimester. When you take general pathology, there's a big, there's a whole chunk on, cl on clotting and that whole process in there. Uh, deficiency of which vitamin crucially impairs the action of the enzyme glutathione peroxidase. Let me. Glutathione peroxidase. Protecting cells from oxidative stress and damage. So we look at this oxidative stress and damage with the B vitamins we talked about, or with the water soluble vitamins we had talked about, kind of vitamin C, you know, kind of helps with that. On the fat soluble vitamin side of things, vitamin E does a lot of that, that job. 
Formation in which of the following compounds is required for vision in poor light and dark adaptation. That's responsible for the poor light, dark adaptation. That is our rhodopsin's job. And remember, that's opsin plus the 11, whatever, the 11 cis retinol makes rhodopsin. How does selenium help vitamin E to exert its biochemical function? E's biochemical function, just like we saw above, it's that glutathione peroxidase. So it's an additional cofactor in the glutathione peroxidase reactions. Hydrolysis of which of the following forms of vitamin A is essential for its intestinal absorption. Intestinal absorption, that is our general basic form, is the retinal ester. A lot of questions about vitamin A in this one. Stored in the liver as retinal ester, that's its storage form, is the retinal ester. In the visual cycle, Transducin activates which of the following? Again, that's going to be our CGMP dependent phosphodiesterase. A lot of these types of questions, the best, like the honestly, the best way to kind of study these is is just seeing the questions over and over and over again. Because this is the whole process that it's talking about. You could spend your time memorizing this process, but to be honest you're going to get more out of just seeing the questions over and over again and learning how to answer these the, these specific questions okay uh, increased levels of which pigment can increase induced vitamin d biosynthesis sorry i read the question wrong increased levels of which pigment can decrease uv light induced vitamin d biosynthesis that is melanin. Too much melanin, or I should say, the more melanin that you have, the less your sun, your the sun can actually you can absorb those sun rays to create vitamin D. Menaquinone seven is the precursor of which of the following enzymes? The way that I remember this is remember how in the electron transport chain. You have that coenzyme Q. We'd always say, oh, coenzyme Q is very similar to vitamin K. Menequinone has the Q, and that's our vitamin K. Osteomalacia can be caused by which of the following vitamins? Deficiency of which the vitamin? We talked about that vitamin D. Myeloquinins and menequinins are natural forms of which vitamin? There's our Q, and we have our Q, vitamin K. Severe deficiency of which of the following proteins could cause a problem with the transportation of vitamin E in the liver. Vitamin E, specifically this word, transportation of the vitamin E. A lot of, most of our fat-soluble vitamins are going to be using the chylomicrons to get through the body. Severe deficiency, which of the following will lead to vitamin E deficiency in a normal individual, repeat of the same question, the chylomicron. I think the different one, again, is going to be the vitamin A, where we get certain ones. Um, Actually, I'd say so getting this the transportation of everything um, is through a lot through the chylomicrons. And so that's the most that's the question you're most often going to get asked. And understanding that the fat soluble vitamins are getting into our bodies the same way that any of our other fats, fatty acid chains would be getting into our bodies. 
Okay, the use of antibiotics can cause deficiency of which of the following group of vitamins in the human system. The big one you want to remember is vitamin K. Because vitamin K, one of the places that we get it from is actually the bacteria in our gut. So our, we eat food, bacteria digests that food. Through the process of digesting that food, we also digest some of the bacteria bacteria um, and that bacteria is producing vitamin K. You again use antibiotics to cause deficiency which are the following and vitamins in human systems. Vitamin K. Now vitamin E is also known as which of the following? We know that menequinone right there, bam, that is responsible. That is one of our vitamin K type guys. 1-alpha hydroxylase ACE, that's an enzyme. D7 dehydrocholesterol, that's a cholesterol. Vitamin E is also known as alpha tocopherol. To What is the function of glutathione peroxidase? So that function, we saw the, the function of glutathione peroxidase. Again, we saw this up above. It uses glutathione peroxidase. It has the vitamin E as a part of it. Um, it uses selenium as well. And its job is, um, as we talked about, the um, fighting against the free, this uh, protecting against oxidative stress and damage. Sorry, tripped over words a little bit there. So supports growth and development of skin cells. Nope, converts lipids to toxic peroxide derivatives. No. Protects tissues from lipid peroxide induced damages. That one sounds the best for us as well. So this is kind of where you start to see similarities, kind of the glutathione peroxidase as vitamin with like the vitamin E selenium combo does a similar job as the ascorbic acid, aka vitamin C on the other side of things. What is the primary mechanism of action um, of vitamin K. K. Vitamin K is going to use glutamate dehydrogenase. My brain is space. I forgot what, what that enzyme this food does, but vitamin K acts as the coenzyme of the enzyme G carboxylase or G glutamyl carboxylase. What is the primary mechanism of action of vitamin K? This is the exact same question. The coenzyme of the enzyme G carboxylase that produces gamma carboxyglutamate. Which of the what is the product of beta carotene? dioxygenase catalyzed reaction. Um, this is where like a lot of this vitamin A stuff can get kind of confusing. Um, I would recommend with the vitamin A stuff kind of writing this sort of this stuff down. Um, also these graphs aren't great. Let me look at some of this. Beta carotene dioxygenase. So we're looking at a specific enzyme right there. Beta carotene dioxygenase converts beta carotene into retinol now, and then later it's converted to retinol. So it already looks. It looks like a um, bigger chunk of questions are coming from vitamin A type stuff. So that's where I would spend. A little bit more of my time is running through the vitamin A material. What is slash R true of vitamin E prevents lipid peroxidation? Yes, 
protects tissues from oxidative damage. Yes, so at least two of them. That ought to be all of the above. And is an antioxidant. Yes. Which condition increases the production of active vitamin D3? So there's all, remember that there's always a relation between vitamin D and calcium levels. So to increase the production of vitamin D3, um, we have a decrease in serum calcium levels. There's kind of an opposite reaction there. Which condition slash vitamin deficiency is a correct match? So a lot of these hemorrhage, we think what deals with clotting, that's vitamin K. Night blindness, which vitamin has to do with the eyes and the skin? Vitamin A has to do with the eyes and the skin. Uh, hemolysis of red blood cells, that's just a distractor that's not really messing with any of these specific vitamins. Xerophthalmia, being dry, kind of dry eyes, eye issues, is related to vitamin A deficiency. Again, which one is not? That one was a correct match. Which one is not a correct match? Hemorrhage and vitamin K, heck yeah. Xerophthalmia, vitamin A, yes, yes. Hemolysis of red blood cells and vitamin D. And vitamin D deals with the bones. Which cyclic nucleotide is generated and is used to activate protein phosphorylation slash dephosphorylation mediated signal transduction in the visual mechanism? So when in the lecture, in the, the book reading, I kind of talk about how it's very similar to the G protein coupled receptors. So it's our GMP. Which enzyme is responsible for the production of the specific cyclic nucleotide required in visual signal transduction? Jeez, yeah, he really digs into vitamin A stuff. Uh, it's the guanylate cyclase. Again, see, the, see these questions five, six times, and you'll be good for the test. Uh, which of the following reducing agents, bam, reducing agents, is required by the enzyme retinaldehyde reductase to convert retinal to retinol. This is, again, just kind of raw memorization. Retinal to retinol is NADPH. I think like half these questions have been about vitamin A specifically. Which is the precursor for the biosynthesis of the active vitamin D3 in humans. Vitamin D3. This again, this is going to be kind of memorizing. It's the 7-dehydro um, dehydrocholesterol is the precursor precursor for biosynthesis of the vitamin D3. This is another pathway, the D vitamin pathway, that you're definitely going to want to remember. So 7 D hydrocholesterol gets converted by, by the UV light into cholecalciferol. And then there's a step in the liver and a step in the kidney, and it becomes the 1 alpha 25 dihydroxy vitamin D3, aka calcitriol. These steps, this to this to this, is another one that you'll want to remember pretty good. Um, as this is the this stuff is going to come back a lot in future courses, especially like phys two, and then again in tri four and tri five when you get in a bunch of kidney stuff. Which is the required guanine nucleotide binding protein uh, in the visual signal transduction? It's this protein called transducin. What is the visual pigment? The pigment is the rhodopsin, which remember is the opsin plus the 11 cis um, reti, whatever it's, it is, retinol, retinoic acid, or something like that. 
which isoform of vitamin A is produced when rhodopsin is bleached? So the 11 cis retinol plus opsin gives us rhodopsin. Once it's acted on, we get all trans retinol. Um, retinol ester, that is the storage form and the form that is absorbed. And retinoic acid was the one that binds to albumin. And what was the question we had about retinoic acid? Retinoic acid, what was the... It does the growth and development of the rod and the cone cells. Yeah, lots of questions on vitamin A. Which of the following basic structure unit is used to synthesize all fat soluble vitamins? Remember the same thing that all the stuff the fats are made out of? Those isoprene units, it's way back in like the first exam with fatty acid biosynthesis. Which of the following biochemical conditions is true for rod and cone cells when photons or visible lights excite these eye cells? Uh, this is again just going to be a lot of a bleh memorize. It's the CGMP levels are high above, which keeps sodium channels open. Which of the following chemical forms of vitamin A can be stored in animal tissue? That storage form is the retinyl ester. Which of the following chemical forms of vitamin K is the catalytically active form in blood clotting cascade reactions? So it is going to be, in order to be activated, vitamin K gets reduced. It's reduced to get activated. Yeah, I'm getting a more repeat type of questions. Transporter for vitamin E to the liver. Those chylomicrons, they do the transporting. Um, what binds directly binds with opsin to synthesize rhodopsin? We've hit that a couple times. The 11 cis retinol. Which of the following compounds would be the substrate for gamma glutamyl carboxylase in the presence of the active form of vitamin K as the coenzyme? So just like um, vitamin E has the coenzyme selenium. Um, vitamin K, um, sorry, vitamin K, this substrate with vitamin K is prothrombin. We remember that. So um, most people have heard of a thrombus. A thrombus is a blood clot. Um, it's, it's in the body. So thrombocytes are our platelets. This is the technical name for um, platelets is thrombocytes. Prothrombin is the chemical that's, you know, in charge of um, assisting with the clotting and everything going on. Which of the following conditions can cause the biosynthesis of 125-dihydrocholecalciferol? There's a missing E in there. Um, so we decrease, decrease the biosynthesis of this guy. We're thinking, okay, let's take a look and see. So decrease in serum calcium levels. Remember, these are inversely related. So if we have less serum calcium, we're trying to make more stuff. Because um, this right here, this is our vitamin D, right? Decrease in vitamin D synthesis. That's literally what we're talking about, so it's not that. And then NADPH levels in cytosol, not that. Decrease in parathyroid hormone secretion. This can be the answer. Whenever we're talking about calcium, calcium stuff, 
the main horm like the hormone that helps control that is the parathyroid. If you haven't already, you'll start to get into pathologies of like parathyroid hormone does funky stuff to the bones and causes our calcium levels to to go all funky depending on if there's too much parathyroid or not enough. Which of the following is required for visualization when daylight is received by the eye cells? Gosh, there's so many questions about this. Um, this, just like any other nerve, because what the eye does is it takes those light molecules and it creates an electrical signal that sends an electrical signal to the brain. So we go from a state of depolarization to a state of hyperpolarization. In order to see. Which of the following enzymes catalyzes the biosynthesis of epinephrine from norepinephrine? Uh, this is. I think this question is in the wrong um, category. This should have been when we were talking about the formation of catecholamines. That's okay. This is just one of the um, one of the enzyme type questions. It's going to be a phenyl 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 ethanolamine M N methyl transferase is the enzyme that does nor epinephrine to nor. Epinephrine from norepinephrine. So epinephrine to epinephrine. Norepinephrine to epinephrine. Jeez. Which of the following enzymes are catalytically active form of vitamin K as its coenzyme? That's our G carboxylase. Which of the following fat soluble vitamins can be synthesized inside of humans? Vitamin D, so we use the UV lights when we make it ourselves. Which of the following? I don't know why my computer has been doing that recently, where it just kind of the screen goes blank, but okay. Which of the following forms of vitamin A possesses full vitamin A activity? So it's going to be through the whole process in the very end. The most active form is the retinol with the O. Which of the following forms of vitamin A can support reproduction? This is going to be, there's a whole, this whole little process, retinol, the reproduction, retinol acts like steroid hormones and also does immune function. Retinol can support reproduction. A lot of just like straight up flashcardy type stuff. Which of the following forms of vitamin A is available in certain vegetables and orange fruits like, like spinach, carrots, ripe papaya, and ripe mangoes? Um, orange fruits, so spinach has a bunch of vitamin A, um, but the chlorophyll covers it up. So, um, which of the following forms of vitamin A is in all these stuff? That's our beta carotene. Which of the following forms of vitamin A reacts with opsin to regenerate to generate rhodopsin? A lot of repeat questions in this, and. It seems like a, most of these questions are vitamin A stuff, so please study vitamin A stuff. Which of the following pair is not a correct match? Vitamin K and prothrombin are lipid peroxidation and vitamin E for sure are retinoic acid and vitamin A 100%. Alpha hydroxylase and vitamin D. I don't quite remember that one, but it's one of these. Uh, Menaquin, menaquinone 7 and vitamin E. Absolutely not, because Q goes with 
coenzyme Q, which is vitamin K, not vitamin E, so that is not a correct match. Again, which is not a correct match. I don't even have to go any further. That has the Q, that's supposed to be with vitamin K, so and it is not correct. Which the following pro vitamin A form is present in carrots. Carrots is our beta carotene. If you want um, healthy skin and healthy eyes, eat at least a, eat a carrot a day. It's supposed to supposed to be the way it works. I don't know how much of it is actually true, but for skin, typically, oh, um, this is just a fun clinical fact. If you don't tan very well, eat a lot of carrots. If you eat like three full sized carrots a day, and like if you're, you tend to be really, really pale and you eat more carrots, your skin will naturally you kind of increase your beta carotene to levels that'll actually will kind of bronze you out. It won't turn you orange, but it'll bronze you out and you'll look tanner. Yeah. Which of the following statements about vitamin K is true? The precursor for vitamin K is synthesizing pentose phosphate pathway. We don't talk about that at all. Vitamin K does not have any effect in thrombosis. Thrombosis is clotting. Heck yes, it does. Vitamin K is obtained from tryptophan. We've never, we have not talked about that at all when we were talking about with tryptophan. Tryptophan, remember, turns to uh, to niacin. Vitamin K is required for synthesis of prothrombin. Heck yes. Related to that prothrombin. Which of the following statements is not true for fat soluble vitamins? Deficiency of bile salts can interrupt in transportation of fat soluble vitamins. Absolutely, because we need bile salts um, in order to break down everything into its uh, monomeric form, the most broken down form, in order to be absorbed. Uh, low absorption of fat soluble vitamins may be associated with a deficiency of chylomicrons. Absolutely true. Fat soluble vitamins are not hydrophilic. That is true. Fat soluble vitamins are not hydrophilic, they are hydrophobic. Um, retinol cannot be synthesized from isoprene units. That's written as the answer. I don't believe the book specifically talks about. Because that would mean that retinol can be synthesized from isoprene units. Let me see. I don't remember that being found anywhere in the reading. Memorize your question. I mean, I don't know if that's maybe just not correct. Let me Go to the to the Google. I don't know where that question is coming from, because um, I don't remember seeing that in the book. If it is in the book somewhere and somebody finds it, let me know. But Google says that vitamin A is made up of four isoprene units, but also we don't make 
truly make vitamin A in our body, we have to consume it in other forms and then we convert it to vitamin A. So I would say that that is kind of a bad question in my book. Okay. Um, ultimate activation of prothrombin to produce thrombin as our vitamin K. Whenever we're talking about the prothrombin, we're talking about vitamin K. Not an antioxidant. Vitamin D is the only one that's not an antioxidant. Um, e is typically the one that's associated as an antioxidant, like its main purpose. Vitamin C as well is an antioxidant. So, and vitamin A assists with like immune support and immune health. So, um, particularly activation of blood clotting factors, vitamin K. That's like the only question you're going to get asked about vitamin K is like that it's its role in blood clotting stuff with prothrombin or something like that. Which type of reaction initiates vitamin D biosynthesis in the human skin? Photolysis. The sun shines and the UV rays actually go in and they, the UV rays breaks bonds to get the process going. Which vitamin helps transportation of oligosaccharides across the lipid bilayer? That's our vitamin A does that. Guys, go back to the, either the video. Go, go through the whole chapter. Read through carefully the whole vitamin A section and know it inside and out. That's where a ton of questions are probably going to come from. Just because it is the, the biggest one of all of them. That does just it just does the most stuff of the fat soluble vitamins. Uh, which vitamin shows antioxidant properties at highest oxygen concentration? Uh, this is a weird question. So we know vitamin E, vitamin C, and vitamin A all have antioxidant properties. Highest oxygen concentration is going to be vitamin E. Again, I don't really like. I don't love that question, but it is what it is. Okay, everybody, that is all the way through the Linus learning questions. Woo, we did it. At this point, you know, I'm just going to say, uh, make sure, you know, make flashcards, do stuff, practice these questions kind of over and over and over again. Um, write questions based off of these questions. So some of these questions that we see where that it talks about, you know, um, these enzymes. So like, uh, write out your own question of like, okay, to convert retinol to retinol, what do you need? What reducing agent do you need in order to, what does the enzyme retinaldehyde reductase do? Changes retinol to retinol, retinol to retinol, stuff like that. Making more specific questions to help you study so that way, you know, as you go through, like, you don't have to read as much and you can fly through some of these questions and just for quick and easy memory recall. Hey everybody, hopefully um, this is, has helped a little bit. Just if anything, to give you guys a better idea of what you need to study and prepare for for the exams. Uh, for for this upcoming exam. So if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, just drop a comment um, down below and I'll I'll check it out as soon as I get to it. Everybody have a great night.